Hey guys, 50s Kid here with another video on the 2000 Honda Odyssey. Uh, today's problem is that it idles high when it's cold. Uh, when you turn the engine on, it idles at 2000 RPMs and then it quickly settles down to 1300 RPMs and that's where it stays until the vehicle warms up and you go driving around and then you know from, from there it, it, it idles normally around 750 rpms to fix this issue i'm going to be looking at the idle air control valve and see if uh, i can clean that i've heard some people do clean those with some success but in order to get at that valve on this vehicle i need to take the uh, intake manifold off um, but that's not that big a deal it's actually pretty easy on this car um, while I'm at it, while I have the intake manifold off, that's a good time to, to clean out the EGR port. That, that port does get clogged up on this vehicle. I know because I've already done this and I've already cleaned that port, but I'll show you how to do it while I have it off because uh, it's, it's the perfect time to do that. Anyway, let's, uh, let's get started. First, I'm going to remove the air box. Good time to check the air filter. Change it if it's dirty. It looks like this one's pretty dirty. I'll change it. Just gonna disconnect these items. And these hoses that are just connected into the, into the air snorkel here. Move this clip. So that pulls out. There's a hose on the back here. Another one here. This one's actually a little longer than I thought. Take a picture of this before you pull things off, just so you remember what goes where. The math sensor just hooks in there. Loosen up the clamp here. There we go. So there are a couple fasteners here. They're all 12s. I think I'll just uh, disconnect the, the top the top hose from the PCV there. And over here, there's a clamp, a hose and a clamp that needs to be loosened. First, it needs a little silicone. Had to pull up on the manifold a little bit. There's a, it's it's actually it's a very short hose. That's why it wasn't coming off easily. Should be able to move this out of the way. I'll disconnect the other valve. I'll remember that 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 short one went on this side. The brake vacuum hose. There's a sensor connector back there. A couple more things binding me up. I'll disconnect these electrical connectors. There's another little vacuum hose, not the not the top one, but this bottom one right here. Just gonna come in and disconnect that. There we go. I'm also gonna disconnect the top. Vacuum hose. Just lever it off like that. Oh. Looks like there's liquid in it. Yeah, so those are both coolant lines. This line and the one below it, they're both coolant lines, so make sure you uh, just uh, put them in a position where they are up above and they're not leaking. So now I'm gonna lift off the, the intake and 
turn it over. Okay. I'm uh, gonna unscrew the idle control valve and examine it. There's a rubber gasket. Take note of it. And it definitely looks dirty. I'm just using some ultra fine steel wool, some quadruple, quadruple zero ultra fine steel wool to just clean the surface of the aluminum. This is a lacquer thinner that I'm using because I have it handy. I've cleaned up the uh, idle air control valve as much as I can. And um, the thing that really uh, uh, bothers me actually is this, this O-ring right here. If you can see that, hopefully you can see that it's, uh, it's protruding out. And I, th I can definitely you know, peel aside with my fingernail and I can see that it's, it's not sealing in that one area. And I think that's probably causing a vacuum leak. Um, one thing you'll notice is that these screws, they're not hex screws. They have five lobes, so they're pentalobe screws, and they're, I can't even find bits for them. And I have a set of like security bits and stuff. Uh, what that's telling me is that Honda really does not want you messing with this. It's probably calibrated exact to, to an exact degree or something, and they just, they don't want you messing with it. So. I think my only recourse is to buy another one or um, find a used one in a junkyard. And I'm reading that the aftermarket units uh, uh, can cause problems as well. So um, they, they, you know, people, some people recommend finding one from a junkyard. So that's also, you know, that that's probably going to be what I'm going to do. Um, I happen to know there's a Honda Odyssey in my local junkyard right now, and uh, the engine is still there, hopefully. Um, so I'm probably going to go tomorrow and see what they have. But as, as far as trying to repair this one, I think what I'm also going to do is I'm going to use a little bit of red RTV and I'm just going to just cover the whole outer surface. This stuff does, does say uh, I can just let it skin over for 15 minutes and then reassemble the part. It's, you know, it's, it's, kind of designed it to get you out the door faster, um, but I'm still gonna let it cure for 24 hours. And this actually, um, it doesn't actually press up against anything. It just kind of hangs out here over the side of the intake. So I think that'll be fine. And hopefully that'll, that'll give me a good seal if I have to use this part. So in order to clean out the EGR passage, by the way, you uh, take a drill bit and kind of stick it in here. Okay and uh, you just kind of keep working your way up. I, I started with a quarter inch and I just kind of went up from there. And this is a 930 seconds. And it actually, I, I couldn't get it in there at first and I just kind of twirled it around a little and kind of cleaned the stuff off the walls. This is a, a 1964th, which now kind of spins pretty freely. And then yeah, I got all the way up to a 5 16th. And uh, now that one spins freely, and then I can't get a I can't get a 2164th in there at all because that's actually too big for the port. So uh, that's all I did. You know, I just was able to stick. See that one's that one's actually too big for the actual metal. So 15 or 516ths was what I worked up to. I guess that's about a 12 millimeter, and uh, and that's it. I'm just kind of I kind of dug it in there and twirled it around and did that and kind of reamed that passage out and that's how you that's how you clean it out okay so i was able to repair this with red rtv and i think it's going to work but uh, then i did a little more research and i discovered that you can get these five point star bits on amazon i bought those they were about nine bucks and now i can actually take this thing apart properly You see my RTV just basically comes right off. So I can take my, my RTV out and examine that O-ring. That's a really tiny, really skinny O-ring. 
What I'm going to try doing is I'm going to try to reuse the old O-ring. You can see that right here down at the bottom corner, that's the part that was down here that it popped out of this little corner right here. So since you can see that there's a little captive channel on either side, I'm just going to rotate the O-ring, the bad part of the O-ring, so that it's inside one of those channels. And then I'm going to put this back on right there so that it pinches it inside of that channel. And now there's the part of the O-ring that didn't fail that's basically exposed. And so now I'll put it back together. <coughs> and hopefully this will kind of work. If not, you know, I'll find a new O-ring. I can find that O-ring size somewhere. I think in my little local hardware store they have a, a, a loose bin of O-rings. Or they sell loose O-rings, I should say. If you don't want to buy these these star these five point star bits, I've read that people have taken a hacksaw and have sawed just a slot in the the head of the screw so they can use a flathead screwdriver to do this. But this is how you would do it. It's a TS15 that you need. Um, I'm I'm reusing my O-ring. Of course, you should you should buy a new one. We're gonna reinstall this sucker. I'm reusing the gasket because it's in good shape. Not too worried about that. I reused it last time. Make sure it's actually good here. Put that hose back in over here. The hose wasn't clamped down to anything. It was. It just runs underneath like this. So. Tighten these bolts down to 16 foot-pounds and start from the center out. I'm going to reconnect these coolant hoses. Let's go to the bottom of the idle air control valve. The other one was here. These two electrical connectors. Oh. Yeah, you can see those. Back on with the boot. Those two alignment tabs right there. Probably easier to put that pipe in as you're putting the boot on. This one goes up on top here. And actually, it might be easier to put the bottom one in first. That guy's in. That guy's in. He goes here. snaps into place there. This goes here. Back here there's a there's this hose. That actually goes to uh, I forget what it's called. There's another little rubber grommet on the back for holding that down. Don't forget back up here, that vacuum hose snaps into place and obviously you can see where these went to. And there's a connector. I wonder if it goes above, I think it goes above, which, you know, doesn't matter. But there you go.
this electrical connector went inside this little channel here. Just after a quick little check around, I didn't forget anything, and uh, now I'm just going to put the air cleaner box on. Got a new filter in there. This little hook right here just kind of pops in where the screw is just to steady it. Lastly, and that's it. I mean, it's pretty simple, right? All you need is just a little bit of confidence, you know? It's, it's, it's not that much. Just a couple of connectors, a couple of hoses, and a couple of bolts. All right, well, anyway, that's close enough for me. Um, it's 1100 RPMs. I, 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 th I think it's supposed to be a thousand um, because I used to have an Acura and I, if I remember correctly, that's what it would settle down to, a thousand, and then pretty soon it would drop down to 700 once it was warm. But anyway, you know, this is a lot better than 1300. It was, it was idling pretty high there and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy with the results. So hopefully you have uh, found this video helpful. You know how to clean your idle or control valve now. So, uh, Thanks for watching.